Uh, there are different kinds of trips that ITE recognizes. I'm not going to go over all of them today. The primary trips are the ones it, that are uh, origin and destination. That means this person is at home, they go shopping, they come home. Uh, Pass-by trips are, are a, a big discussion item anytime a commercial development is built. Uh, in this case, uh, person is going to work, this is their home, uh, they stop for donuts, and then they head on to work, and that's called a pass-by trip. So a certain amount of this site development trips are not new. Um, not going to go into great detail here, but there's something called a diverted trip, which is similar to pass-by, but instead of using the same road, like this one is assuming here, uh, think of a discount outlet mall off of uh, I-95. So you got people going from their vacations in Miami to New York, but they love the prices at the St. Augustine discount mall. So they get off and they drive on a few streets to get to the discount mall, and uh, then they head back and that they're going back to New York. Um, generally, we uh, consider the, these trips new trips unless they are very, very close to, uh, to let's say, the interchange. And then, of course, the interchange itself will definitely have more traffic, and so that is an issue. And that interchange is a public uh, facility, whereas this person's driveway is a private facility. So, so here's the home, here's the convenience market, they are going to the office. Now, like I said before, there, during a typical hour, there will be a hundred going in and a hundred going out. In this particular case, this uh, supermarket here has a 20% pass-by, and uh, guidance for this is found in the ITE Trip Generation Handbook. So where it really matters in a, uh, a site impact study would be at the signal. You know, this is uh, 100 trips leaving during, let's say, the PM peak hour, and they're going in this direction, but of those 100 trips that you projected coming from this store, only 80 of them are new. And as you look at the data for uh, pass-by, some of them can be quite high. These pass-by trips only apply to retail. Uh, even though you may stop uh, at the office uh, on the way back from a restaurant to home, it just, uh, it's just not that much to count. So it's usually, it, it, these are, are retail-oriented uh, land uses. The most recent, uh, and that's the third edition of the uh, um, ITE Trip Generation Handbook, uh, shows this scatter graph of, of different studies for pass-by uh, for different um, size shopping centers, the, the code 820. Uh, you can see they're all over the place, but you can also generally see the smaller the store. And, you know, I don't like the, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, the, the scale here, because a, a 100,000 square foot shopping center is a, is a community shopping center. It's not a, you know, a really small store. But you can see they have them in there. But uh, as as the size of the development, like, and I believe this would be like a million square feet or 1.2 million square feet, uh, the more the primary trips take over. Uh, you know, this would be for jewelry shopping and and major clothes shopping. We just had a question here. Um, is there a cap number?
for pass-by trips. And what we recommend in the handbook is that it should never or rarely go above 10% of the adjacent street traffic. Um, this is strictly a common sense check and is not based on uh, scientific data, but it has been used frequently. Uh, and it, it, it is just a guide that has been used quite frequently uh, in the past. We had another question here, and um, what's the break point between pass-by and diverted trips? Uh, and we, we, as in those of us in this office, uh, in our discussions now, I think we mentioned this before, the handbook is guidance, it's not rule. And we uh, are uh, constantly trying to, to help people with, with knowledge, use that knowledge in a, uh, uh, with professional judgment and not necessarily um, just, oh, this is what the number says. Um, but we don't have a, a break point that we've written down and said, well, if it's the, uh, um, the St. Augustine, uh, you know, outlet center, that's okay. That's the diverted trip. Uh, but if it's the Publix that's five miles from the interchange, that's a new trip. Um, we just ask you, as a professional, to to use to use your judgment. Now, this is an example here, and I'm going to show you that you can uh, how you would do this. If there were 30, uh, 3,000 trips per hour on this four-lane roadway, also with no median then the correct way to do it for this size center is, uh, you know, if you were using 24% pass-by, uh, which uh, you got from your negotiations and from other places, uh, that would be 435. However, it is 435 is over that 10% of the 3,000. So it should be adjusted down to 300, and using the same proportions of in and out. And then, you know, we're doing this. We think we've done a good job at trying to explain this in training. And then somebody points out, I don't know if I can draw. I say, well, what if there is a median over here and another driveway in here? And what if this is a side street? What about the traffic on this street? And we said, wow, that really does make a difference. You know, so, so again, what we have here is a very simple concept of the 10%, which we have not found in, you know, science uh, or studies. Um, and the other thing is, is that as you look around the site, it could be surrounded by more than one road. And it can, of course, be impacted by medians, traffic signals, and uh, median openings. So you got the general idea here. We have a recording of uh, what I think is a, a, a really good detailed recording of uh, pass by trips made by somebody else other than myself. And uh, here's the link to it. 
and there is also uh, uh, what I think is an excellent but dated webinar on access management that's about the pitfalls which goes into some of the things that you've heard here but in in this case uh, you will be able to uh, go back and relook at things that that uh, might have passed by you but the information that we're giving you today is the most up-to-date mm -hmm.